by Whitlaw Mugwiji Good morning Zimbabwe and compliments of the new year. It has been a while since we last had a conversation. A lot has transpired during my absence. 2017 could not have ended any better. I cannot fathom anything better than the fall of the incompetent and corrupt Robert Mugabe and his ignoramus wife. Whitlaw Tanyaniwa Mugwiji they have eyes but they do not see ancient wisdom must have informed Grace Mugabe that when a drum is playing too loudly, it's close to tearing apart. But I cannot fault her, even our so-called political analysts did not see November coming. They could not even decipher the decisive import of Vice President Constantino Chi Wenger's press statement. But my greatest disappointment came when they failed to understand the meaning of tanks in the streets of Harare. There and then, I perfectly understood what Jesus meant when he said they have eyes but they do not see. Like doubting Thomas, they had to see the now Foreign Affairs and International Trade Minister, retired Lieutenant General Sibisi Somoyo on the television, clad in his military gear to understand what was happening. Quite frankly, if I was the opposition, I would not be comfortable taking political advice from such people. Has Sanu PF become stronger? As if the failings were not enough, they tell US now that the opposition is going to be walloped in the coming elections. Speaking with so much authority as if they have crystal balls to see into the future. Before Mugabe's downfall, they constantly told us that Sanu PF under Nangagwa would be weaker. Now they are singing a different hymn. What is it, my comrades? Has Sanu PF become stronger? In order to prepare adequately for the forthcoming elections, the opposition must study this issue seriously. I personally posit that Sanu PF has become stronger under Nangagwa, and here is why. Since the early 90s, our economy has been struggling. Some have often cited the Economic Structural Adjustment Program ESAP as the progenitor cause. However, I sincerely disagree. The genesis of our economic problems was laid in our economic policies in the 80s. Thus, we have never been financially prudent as a nation. We relied too heavily on aid to finance recurrent expenditure and to fund development. Anyone with a bit of sense would have known back then that it is an unsustainable way of funding growth. What ESAP tried to do and dismally failed was to address those structural challenges. In the late 90s with the straining of relations with the international community, donor aid dried and the balance of payments support was frozen and the rest is history. Nangagwa, unlike his predecessor, understands that investment and not empty platitudes is key to solving our economic challenges. However, there are two caveats to this point. Firstly, it is one thing to know what needs to be done and another to doing it. Inasmuch as many Zimbabweans welcome the changes in the government as stone on the economy, they remain skeptical on its ability to implement its plans. Secondly, investment is a long-term game. Unfortunately, our people want short-term improvements in their lives. In short, Nangagwa will not be able to appease many of the urbanites, and therein lies the opportunity for the opposition to take advantage of. But in order to do so, the Opposition must change its language and start speaking economy. Weak opposition and petty pro-opposition activists I have noticed a very worrying development in the pro-opposition camp. Instead of talking about unemployment, health care, corruption, investment, good governance, devolution etc., the opposition is focusing rather on petty issues. One day it's about the number of Nangagwa's bodyguards. Another day, they are questioning why the First Lady Auxilla Nangagwa did not do hospital visits before becoming the First Lady. These are petty bourgeoisie discussions. They do not answer the everyday bread and butter issues affecting the common man-woman in the streets. Each day, with such discussions we are losing the moral high ground on the economy. Have we forgotten that the economy is our forte? Adding on top of those senseless discussions, our opposition is currently weak. The MDC coalition which is our ray of hope is riddled with strife and contradictions. Its leader, Changarai, is not feeling well and worst of all its coffers are dry. David Hoffi C. in his blog post, supports my claim that the opposition is weak. He asserts that Mugabe's removal was aided by the fact that the opposition is currently weak. I am sure there is little disagreement on 
this issue. Our challenge is to put our house in order, with little time that is left, if we are not careful, we will be sitting on the opposition benches once again, come elections. The consolidation of ZANU-PF's pillars of support the frail, power-hungry Mugabe together with his erratic, infantile and divisive wife had estranged ZANU-PF's key pillars of support. The war veterans and the security sector were the Mugabe's prime targets, even though they had been key to ZANU-PF's survival post-2000. Now, after successfully disposing Mugabe they are bubbling with energy and oozing confidence. They are going to be the key actors in ZANU-PF's selection strategy. Of course, chiefs are another key component to that election strategy, but they are malleable. They have neither conviction nor backbone. They follow wherever the wind blows. That said, Mugabe and the G40 faction still have supporters within ZANU-PF. The numbers are unknown and unverifiable. On top of that, we must bear in mind that this is the first election after Mushiro left ZANU-PF. Hence, if the opposition is cunning enough, it can manipulate and facilitate Oromo Sangar 2.0. In a nutshell, ZANU-PF has become stronger, but I do not believe that the 2018 elections are lost cause. Did the fall of Mugabe signal a new era? In concluding, let us revisit the original question. Has the fall of Mugabe signaled a new era? In Zimbabwe, regardless of what Jonathan Moyo and his G40 cohorts say, Zimbabwe has entered a new era. The challenge for us is to decipher what kind of new era it is. We do not have to dig too deep to find the answers. Namagwa's interview with CCTV Talk Africa program sometime in 2015 gave us an insight into his ambitions and his vision for Zimbabwe. He modeled answers along how Deng Xiaoping transformed China. Thus, studying Deng Xiaoping and the transformation of China we can learn at least two lessons. Lessons, I think, are going to be key in this hour. New Era Nangagwa sees himself as the replica to China's Deng Xiaoping. In that interview Nangagwa saw himself as a replica of Deng Xiaoping, with a mandate to modernize Zimbabwe. With just over a month in charge, he has shown an unbridled focus on the economy. His re-engagement efforts, the national budget and his state of the nation address pontificate to this. A new era here is the flip side to Deng Xiaoping's transformation of China. When Deng Xiaoping took the reins of power, many anticipated he would democratize China. However, in 1989 he dispelled that notion when he ruthlessly thwarted the Tiananmen Square protests. Armed with live ammunition and tanks, the army massacred hundreds among hundreds of thousands of demonstrators. Demonstrators who had been calling for democracy, greater accountability and freedom of the press. This makes me believe that Nangagwa like Deng will vigorously attempt to address our economic challenges but will not extend such vigor and effort in leveling the electoral playing field. Even if he personally wanted to, the army will not accept such shenanigans. They invested a lot when they disposed Mugabe, now it's the time to enjoy the fruits of their labor. The HM Thwakazi Republic activists too get a glimpse of what this new era is not about. Let us revisit the story about the HM Thwakazi Republic activists who were arrested two weeks ago. They tortured and detained for demanding truth and justice for Gukara Hundi. So, yes, we might have moved away from Mugabe's empty and meaningless platitudes but it is not yet Uhuru. As we prepare for the forthcoming elections, we must know that Nangagwa will keep one eye on the economy and the other on power retention. Our struggle for democracy continues unabated, hopefully in this new era on full stomachs.